What's up, you hooligans? Um, this isn't our typical video. This is more of a, it's a deeper video, uh, talking a lot about our faith. You know, this will be more of like, um, as we said in the intro of the uh, trailer channel. It's like we say we goofy, but not super goofy, like serious, not super serious. So this is more of a serious part, I guess you could say, of the channel. No, so not too serious. Yeah, not too serious. Tonight we're gonna kind of talk paper versus plastic, which you can actually see right here. And what we mean by that is the paper bag there, the paper, the natural, the, the real, the not fake uh, material is being attacked by the plastic. And the plastic is the fake, the Regina George of people, me girl reference. And, um, and this really applies to Christians because a lot of Christians uh, don't know that they're lukewarm. Well, I mean, it's not that like someone, they, they don't know that they're lukewarm, it's, I guess, you could even know that you're lukewarm, right. so you wouldn't even bother to change that because you feel like you're safe and secure in like your own little world, I guess you could say. I mean, you could go out and say, oh yeah, um, I'm Christian, I do everything the Bible says, but like the next day, like, that you see the same person like going, like smoking or like doing things that like are clearly against, you know, what the Bible says, you know? Yeah. And so tonight we're going to be talking about lukewarm Christians, and we'll start off like with distractions and what makes us lukewarm. And so in that we have um, everyday things such as social media. Social media is a big one. Yeah, I mean, with social media, like it's at, the, um, it's at your fingertips. You can literally do anything on that. You can like call someone out without even having to like, see them up to, like, to their face, you know? And with that, I feel like because it's so easily accessible, and then we choose to use it because, you know, why not? And then we also have our friends, which can either be a good thing or a bad thing, because our friends like show us who we are. Um, I know there's like a, a quote that you know like Justin used to say, like, right. "Show me your friends, and I'll show you your future." Yeah, that's right. Like, cause, because the friends that you have, they really they show the people around you what kind of person you are. And it's not that you can't be friends with people that do bad things. It's just if you let those friends, you know, I don't want to say consume you, but I guess let their habits develop onto you, then. Uh, instead of helping them, they could be hurting you. you know? mm -hmm. And then also we have possessions, which can be our own things, um, such as like our, you know, well, it's our um, phone, which is also goes to social media and cars or anything like that's um, any like good material possession that might get in the way of um, God or anything like that. That even moves into uh, the next thing we have, which is temptation, and you can be really tempted by you know money, or you can be tempted by. Uh, like other people, women or men, um, and it's just, it's hard sometimes because we know they're wrong, but we enjoy them. So all we just really have to get past that, you know, get closer with God and let us know what to do. And so there's a quote from the Bible saying that um, God would rather us be all for him or against us, or against him. It says, Revelation 3.16, so because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. Really, for me, that that really hits me pretty hard. I mean, he'd actually want you to be all the way against him in halfway. So if you're not putting in all your effort, then really, it's just I don't know. Like, what do you think you are to him if you're not all the way for it? Right. Yeah, I guess Justin, our youth pastor, always tells us that you know God will never really be disappointed in you. But at, at times, I. I kind of don't understand that because I, I feel like if you are doing something wrong but you're pretending to be right, he can be maybe a little disappointed, you know, his, his thoughts would be in my mind, you know, come on man, you gotta get it up because he's your friend, you know, he's not anyone who's like looking down on you. I mean, he does kind of look down on us, but like not in a metaphorical sense, in like more of a literal sense. And also because of the fact that God is so forgiving, we might even take advantage of that forgiveness too much because, you know, might, might go off and do something we're not supposed to do. And it's like, oh yeah, it's okay, you're forgiven. Like, okay, cool, so we all just do this again. And yeah, you're forgiving, right? I think it's like kind of the attitude also that adds up to being like lukewarm. I think it's not doing everything right, because I don't think, no one's not gonna sin. I mean, it's just, just like a fact. But it's sinning without having uh, remorse for the fact. I mean, they're, they're tempting. So it's, if you try your hardest and you're still sinning, I mean, that's fine as long as you're putting in the effort. But if you, if you know that like, oh yeah, I'll just be forgiven later, then that's fine. That's not really the attitude that you should be, you should be looking at. So Jesus died so we could be free, you know, and then everything he's given us, phones, uh, money, temptation, a little less applies to the temptation, but those are all meant to be used in moderation. 
and we shouldn't be caught up in them and like worship them. You know, we're, we're always on our phones. We're always, you know, um, I see a lot of guys chasing up girls. I see a lot of girls like always worrying and chasing about guys. And if we're just always like on that, then we don't make enough time for God. You know, we, we worship these things around us when we should be worshiping our God. And then from Le Leviticus 26, 1, do not make idols of stone and image or a sacred stone for yourselves. And do not place a carved stone in your land to bow down before it. I am the Lord your God. And so, really, it ties into like having material possessions, but still not really idolizing them. I mean, you can have like all these nice things and all, but if you focus too much on that and then you lose sight of God, then you're losing the sight of what's important. And a lot of people, they don't go to church every week, and it's not like required that you have to go to church every week because sometimes things come up, but you should make an effort to go every time you can. And a lot of people only go like right before Easter or right before Christmas yeah, on those the services. Those yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, in Hebrews, Hebrews 10, 45, it says, Not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. So when you go to church, you have something to look forward to every week. Like a lot of people, they'll go to church, and when they go to church, they'll just look so down on it. They'll be so unhappy about going to church when that should be one of the best parts of your week because it's like a refresher with God, you know. And with that, I mean, you should have a positive outlook on, like I guess not, I mean not everything, but especially like church for sure. I mean, with that, you can see like your friends there, you can see your family they go to, and like everyone that's there just so. Um, warming and just like accepting. It's like, I don't see why you couldn't like that. You know? There's so much love. But I feel like for some people that might not be the case because they might be new or they might be um, unaware of all the people there. And so I feel like it's getting to know them first, which can be the hardest part because I know this. I had this so rough. Like, I mean, I came to this church in middle school and like I didn't know anybody here. So after like a while, I was left and I didn't even come back again until like last year. But after that, I feel like I was mature enough to know that I was. Step, taking a step forward in my faith, and I feel like for most people that might be scary, but just taking that first step can lead to like a mile, and it's just like the best, best thing you could ever do, honestly. So true. Okay, and so what would you say if Jesus came right now? Would he be like, oh, you, you were all for me, so here, come on, welcome to heaven, or would he be like, oh, I mean, you were kind of like, you know, saying that you were Christian, but then again, you turn behind my back and start doing things that are not what I said. And so I feel like, for me anyways, if he came right now and that now is that, that lukewarm person, I, I couldn't even like stand looking at myself in the mirror. Yeah. And so, you're spot on, I've got nothing to say. Yeah? yeah? Okay. Well, you wanna do this for you? Sure. So, we're all called to serve others and we all have a different gift. Um, and, and you know a lot of people don't know their gifts and that's fine it's like you just you work to find it so you can be a greedy like a greeter not a greeter you could be a greeter and uh, you can be the person who goes around and talks to people and is really warming and then you you you're able to tell them about God a little bit or if you don't you know, tell them at least show them what God is like through how you act towards them you know uh, you can be a volunteer you can spend your time you know uh, at, at our church we work at minis a lot. Um, we, we do a lot of things for them, and that's great. Um, but like we're always trying to do more, which is which is awesome. And a lot of people are just you know great at that. Uh, or you can do worship. Uh, you can have your gift can be worship, which uh, is more of like playing and singing, you know, and whatnot, and being able to lead others in worship and how um, like helping them develop in their faith. And even if, in, even if you don't know your gift. Just going to church and being surrounded by like, other Christians, people that are like, the same as you, can also help you find that. I mean, for me, I didn't even know what I was going to do or like what I wanted to do until I came to church and started realizing a lot about myself, um, Christianity, the world even. And so, don't be afraid, I guess, of not knowing what you should be doing because most of the time, no one really knows what they're doing. And so, just taking again that first step and getting out of that. Oh yeah, I'm so happy in between there just getting out of that state step or stage and leading up into like the all four and like not like all against you know that promise and so i feel like that is something that we should all strive to do but in so ways that we can be less lukewarm i guess are well first off you can pray you can read the bible any way you can get closer to god 
just it just helps so much because the closer you are to God, the more He let Him lead you, and the, like when that keeps going on, it just gets better and better, and you go closer and closer. But those things, a lot of the time, can be very hard to remember. So, if you're watching this video right now, I, I want you to take out your phone, your computer, whatever you use the most, and set one alarm for 10 o'clock in the morning, and repeat it every weekday or every single day if you have that up on the schedule, and name it, help it, who, uh, help someone who needs it for the first one, and then the second one, do it at 12 o'clock every day, and um, name that one, make someone's day, and then do one at two o'clock, talk to someone who's alone, and then one at four o'clock, and that is show someone God. And then after each one of these occurs, uh, every day, whatever happens, make, make an effort to do what it says. And after you do, if you pray, that'll just bring you so much closer to God. And instead of just saying you're gonna do it, actually go out and do it, because being with God and loving God, there's just no, no feeling like it's, it's amazing. I mean, with, you, you can always say, say that you're gonna do something, but actually doing it, I feel like, takes a lot more work, but it's worth, I mean, practice what you preach, you know, if you say you're gonna do something, do it. If you're, um, you promise somebody something, you can do it, you know? It's just, like, empty words, I feel like, are a big part of being this one. I mean, you, you say, oh yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read my Bible every night, or I'm gonna pray, like, every day. But, I guess, really, don't say the things at all if you're not gonna live up to them. And also another thing that you can do to be, um, to be less, I guess, lukewarm is like setting a Bible plan as um, Bryson kind of said with the plan of helping people with their life and everything. But honestly, set up a plan saying like, okay, I'm going to read uh, tonight or and then two nights this week and then three nights next week or like one verse a day. And just anything and start with like reading the Bible too. That's where you can find most of the stories and get more in depth into what God's telling you. And if you have the Bible app on your phone, it's called YouVersion. At the very top, if you go to the home, they have these Bible, um, Bible plans, and those are customized for really anyone that needs it, and they have, I think, hundreds. And so if you choose one of those and you start with that, uh, that just it makes it so much easier. Also, there's a verse of the day on the Bible app, and if you set that to uh, go at every you know, day, I think for me it's 10 o'clock, and then you read that verse, and maybe you keep going, keep going, but... Uh, Bible plan or whatever, it just helps so much. But this has been us on uh, lukewarm Christians. Uh, and it's not to say that, you know, we are, feel we're farther in our faith than you, but like we're still developing our faith. But we just wanted to, we wanted to help as much as we could. And we felt like this was a good way to do it. Yeah, and if you have any questions or any comments, you know, leave them down below and we'll try to get back to you. Do the best we can. Yeah. So see you next week, hooligans.